Although the Scandinavian is not played much by grandmasters, it is generally considered to be an opening that is easy to learn and worth trying out for beginners and club level players. The general goal of the defense is to prevent White from controlling the center of the board with pawns, effectively forcing an open game while allowing Black to build a strong pawn structure. So imagine if you are a player who likes, uh, you know, closed uh, games, you're not going to have much fun in the Scandinavian defense as Black is going to force the game to be an open one, which you don't want. So, without wasting much of your time, the Scandinavian defense is uh, characterized by moves such as e4, d5, then e takes d5, queen takes d5 by black, then knight c3 by white. Most of the times you see black players going queen a5. So that is the Scandinavian defense. Sometimes after knight c3, you see most of uh, the black players responding with a move queen to d8, and sometimes even queen to d6. Or maybe just giving a check right away on e5 or on e6. But before I continue, I would like to make a little distinction between the Scandinavian defense and the Portuguese gambit. So the Portuguese gambit is where white plays e4, then pawn to d5 by black, and then e takes d5. Then instead of queen takes d5, black players respond with the move knight to f6, attacking this pawn once more. They want you to hold on to this pawn, and then they start bringing chaos on the board. So this is a little bit different from the Scandinavian in terms of the move orders and the way white continues. So in this video, we are not interested in the Portuguese gambit. We are talking about uh, the Scandinavian defense and how you can go about beating the Scandinavian defense in less than nine moves or eight moves or, or ways in which you can win fast against Scandinavian players. So stay tuned. So now let's enter into the mind of a Scandinavian player. What does a Scandinavian player expect to see from you as white? So after e4, d5, black expects you to take on d5. So that he can take back with the queen and if knight c3 attacking the queen black will most of the times go queen a5 so as you can see here is that black is very comfortable here playing with a few pawns on the queen side while making white to remain with a few pawns on the king side which in most cases isn't what white was prepared for so what a scandinavian player has achieved here is to have the ball in their hands so oftentimes you will see them developing their minor pieces such as the bishop and the knight and then intending to castle long and start attacking on the king side with their pawns. And here I should mention that the e6 pawn is only developed after the bishop is out. Now having gone through the standard ways of approaching the Scandinavian defense, let me introduce you to a surprise weapon against the Scandinavian defense. So there are two weapons that I'm going to introduce to you which you can use against Scandinavian players and they will really be confused right away in the opening. So the first one is where you employ the Tennyson Gambit against the Scandinavian defense. For example, for example, after e4, d5, instead of taking on d5, I recommend that you play this sneaky move knight to f3. Now this is not a dubious move guys, I should mention that in reality, this is called the Zugatot opening, and it's always advantageous for white if black doesn't take. So most of the times you will see your opponents taking on e4, and then here I recommend the move knight g5, attacking the pawn on e4. And in this position, if you watched the last video that I made on the tennis on gambit, which is also in the description below, you should already know what we are intending to do as white in this position because most of the times you're going to see black holding on to that e4 pawn with a move knight to f6 which is also a developing move it's not much of a stretch i mean it's not even a bad move after all so from here as white we're going to play d3 attacking the pawn on e4 twice Surprisingly enough, you see most of your opponents taking on d3, which is uh, somewhat a blunder, not really a blunder, but uh, a positional mistake. For example, if we take back on d3 with our bishop, now you can see how many moves uh, that black responds with most of the times. And in this position, I should mention that all the arrows that are in red are blunders. There are only two moves that uh, make sense from a black's perspective, such as knight c6 and a pawn to e6. For example, if black plays any of these moves in red, such as pawn to h6, trying to remove our knight from this square, 
We are going to shock him by capturing on F7, Knight Sacrifice, forking the Queen and the Rook at the same time. And in this position, Black doesn't have any other good option apart from taking back that Knight. After which we are going to give him a check on G6 with our Bishop covering the whole of this diagonal. Note that Black cannot even go back. So in this line, you are guaranteed to win Black's free Queen. And the beauty of this line is that all the moves by black seem to be normal and natural. Now in this position, uh, black does not necessarily have to take on d3. Most of the times you are going to see, if you are playing against uh, strong players, you are going to see them playing bishop to g4, just attacking uh, your queen. After which I recommend you go queen to d2. Then after knight c6, a developing move, which is just natural. I suggest that you take on e4 and after knight takes you take back with your d pawn queen takes d2 check bishop takes d2 knight d4 and bishop d3 believe it or not position is equal if not white having an advantage now i covered most of these lines in the previous video that i made on the tennis on gambit which i suggest that you guys should go and watch and uh, please consider subscribing uh, to my channel so that i can continue making more wonderful videos just like this one now again against the scandinavian defense as they say there are many ways to kill a rat after e4 d5 knight to f3 uh pawn takes on e4 knight to g5 attacking the pawn on e4 there is also another way that i like uh you know playing after let's say black plays knight f6 now instead of playing pawn to d3 i like playing the more matured move knight to c3 against strong players so the idea is that i'm just simply attacking the pawn on e4 and oftentimes you will see black holding on to his pawn with the move bishop f5. The, the thing is that uh, the moves that black is playing at the moment, they are all normal moves. They are all normal developing moves. And so black will play these moves automatically. He's defending his uh, pawn on e4 and at the same time he's developing uh, his bishop, which is uh, what they normally do in the Scandinavian defense. So from here, I recommend that you play the move bishop c4, which looks like a normal developing move. But there is a trap that we are setting right now, and it all has to do with uh, uh, the f7 square. But uh, at this time, black won't be able to see it, believe it or not. Because here they are going to play e6, which looks like a normal move, just blocking the vision of this bishop here. And in this position, please remember this move pawn to f3 in this position so the idea is that if black doesn't do anything about our pawn on f3 we're just going to take back the pawn and that's why you see most of your opponents taking on f3 because because they'll be like why not taking that free pawn so here you take with your queen and at the same time i bowling the b7 square and in this position you will see most of uh, your opponents playing pawn to c6 just blocking the vision of this uh, queen and it is in this position that I would love you guys to pause this video and find the right continuation for white. Okay, I think that is enough. It's now time to unleash the move. Knight sack on f7 again, forking the queen and the rook once again. So the idea is that black only has one good option of taking that knight, after which we are going to take the bishop, attacking the e6 pawn with our queen and the bishop. So if you want, you can plug this position into the Leeches database. You'll be shocked to discover that there are many people, there are many strong players who have fallen for this trap. And I'm talking of 2500s, 2600s, even 2700s. So the most common response by black in this position is queen d6, after which I suggest that you go knight e4. And here you can see that black is almost losing from here because after Queen e7, let's say, check on g5 with your knight. And, and then note that the king cannot go to g8 because it will be checkmate by force. So you will see your opponents playing king e8 instead. After which you should take the e6 pawn with your knight. And then after b5 attacking your bishop, just go bishop b3, a5, a4, knight bd7, castle shot, and white is winning. Now, if you like this trap, guys, let me share with you one top secret that I use against any black player. So I force most of my opponents to enter into the rooms of the Scandinavian defense and win games just like 
the way I'm showing you right now. So, for example, it's not every time that when you play e4, your opponent is going to respond with d5. There are many responses. The Caracan defense, the French defense, uh, the Sicilian defense, uh, the Alekine defense. So, so it is not every time that you're going to have these tennis on gambit lines. So instead of starting with e4, I like starting with knight to f3. Because the idea behind knight to f3 is that black can no longer play e5 now so you see them most of the times responding with pawn to d5 and then from here that's when you're going to go pawn to e4 forcing black to enter into the rooms of uh, the scandinavian like structures so that you can employ the tennis on gambit for example oftentimes in this position you're going to see black responding with move d5 after which you should play pawn to e4 and then most of the times again they are going to take after which you should you can see again we are back to the same position where we are we are attacking black spawn on e4 so this is how i like to force my opponent to enter into the lines of the scandinavian even though they do not know how to play the scandinavian again after knight to f3 you you may see your opponent uh, responding with knight to f6 which is the most popular move and here what i like doing is i like playing a quiet move pawn to d3 as if i want to enter into the lines of the king's indian attack so here you are going to see most of your opponents again responding with a move pawn to d5 after which you should now go pawn to e4 because they are going to take they don't know what you are doing they think you want to take with a pawn and so here you are going to play knight e5 attacking the pawn on e4 twice forcing black to make a decision here and i bet most of the times they are going to take on d3 after which you should take back with your bishop again if let's say pawn h6 so sometimes they may even go uh, uh pawn to g6 you should just go on and capture on f7 if they take you take the pawn on g6 with check and uh, black cannot go back so they will have to lose their queen again so this is just how I force uh, my opponents to uh, play the Scandinavian lines, even though they did not intend to do so. And so you can do the same and win fast. Now, enough of the tennis on Gambit. Allow me to introduce you to another way of punishing uh, the Scandinavian defense right away in the opening with the Leonard Gambit. Now, I should say this one is more fun to play because black can even lose very quickly in the opening. For example, after pawn e4, black still responds with pawn to d5, the Scandinavian defense. So here, you should take on d5. So in the tennis on gambit, we, we do not take on d5, but in this line, we, are go we take on d5. Because we want black to take on d5 with his queen as well. After which we are going to play knight to c3 attacking the queen on d5. Then most of the times you are going to see uh, the Scandinavian players responding with a move queen a5. Just sidelining their queen. After which you should play this sneaky move pawn to b4 attacking the queen right away. And you see most of your opponents taking that free pawn. Because they think you want to go rook b1 and then here it will be easier for them to uh, rescue their queen. But after queen takes on b4, you are going to surprise them with the move knight b5. Aiming to capture on c7, forking the king and the rook. So that's why in this position you see most of your opponents responding with the move queen a5. Just defending the c7 square. After which you should play right away bishop c4. Now allow me to pause a little bit right here so that I can uh, just explain what is happening in this position. So now you see both in the tennis on gambit and the leonet gambit, uh, the f7 square tends to be our main target, tends to be the main area of our meat in these lines. So just keep an eye on the f7 square because what is going to happen is that um, any of these moves which I have highlighted in red are blunders, believe it or not. Except for one move, knight to c6, which your opponents most of the times won't play because they are afraid of this knight on b5. And so you see most of your opponents are trying to chase away this knight with the move c6, which is a blunder because right now we are going to suck on f7 again. So king takes on f7 in this position is forced, after which we should play queen h5 check. And then from here, as you can see, it's already worse for black. Because let's say if black thinks he can still block the check 
with uh, the pawn to g6 we now unleash the move knight to d6 which is check and at the same time a discovery on the queen now you can see how unpredictable these lines are and uh, your opponents are likely to fall for these traps because they are not that easy to see now in this position after queen to h5 black may also try to play king to e6 here and this is even worse because now we can come knight d4 check discovery on the queen again so there you have it guys these are the moves that you can use against uh the scandinavian players so that you can win games very fast and i can guarantee you 100 percent you are going to win many games with these gambits either the tennis on gambit or the leonard gambit and in both of these lines just keep an eye on the f7 square because that's the weakest square on the chessboard Okay, so before I end this video, just like I do in most of my videos, I'm going to challenge a random chess player on leeches. Hopefully they play the Scandinavian defense so that I can show you how this gambit works in practical terms. But before I continue, please guys, once again, consider subscribing to my channel so that I can continue making more wonderful videos just like this one. And please don't forget to hit the like button if at all you're enjoying this video and also share this video and uh, leave your comments down below because that also helps to grow my channel. And so without wasting much of your time, let me take you straight into the game so that I can show you how one of these uh, gambits, especially the Leonard gambit, how it works in practical terms. Okay, hey, we are playing against a 23-30 rated chess player. We are playing against a 2300. His name is Arif Awan. Okay, let's hope our opponent is going to play the Scandinavian defense. You know, okay, let's go E4 as usual. Oh wow, Scandinavian defense. We take on d5. Nice c3 is on the plate. Okay, now let's attack the queen. Aiming to go knight b5. Idea is to take on c7. Okay, now bishop. We're going to go bishop c4 just like I explained earlier on. We are eyeballing the f7 square. Wow, our opponent has fallen for this trap. Because I'm going to suck on f7 now. Remember what we said? He thought, I mean, he was not comfortable with my knight. Now let's suck on f7. He only has one good option to take with the king. Queen h5 check. I think now our opponent has realized that he has fallen for this trap. And this is a 23-30 rated chess player, guys. This is a 23-30 rated chess player. He's, he's not a weak opponent. So let's say if g6, okay, he has played f6. What's the right continuation? B, b2, check, yes. Ah, should I check with my queen, bishop? So bishop check. Can we now attack his rook? I go knight c7 attacking his rook and also setting up this nasty discovery with bishop. Let's say bishop d6 check, winning his queen. And there is also a checkmate. I've just seen it. If he plays something else, I'm just going to mate him on e8 with my queen. Wow. <laughs> so this is checkmate, guys. So you've seen how easy it can be to defeat even strong chess players. So you guys, these are, you know, real gambits that work even against strong chess players. These are real gambits. This guy was expecting to uh, see the typical uh, Scandinavian ideas. And then I surprised him with the Leonard Gambit. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that I can continue making uh, more wonderful content just like this one and feel free to check out my playlist on uh, gambits, traps and tricks which I made specifically for you guys.